Colleagues, just want to introduce Angela Montgomery, our new FTO. Many of you don't know her. She's going to deliver a report back on secure hospitals. Please welcome Angela. you all. I started with the POA, it would be February 2020, and then by March we were locked down. So if I've met any of you, I've done so virtually, and I'm really, really pleased to be the new AGS um, with you and carrying on the journey that both Mark and Steve have outlined. I'm here today to give a briefing in relation to our health members. And can I say, since the last POA conference in 2019, health members have been at the front line during the pandemic and have worked throughout, despite the unknown risks which COVID presented to them in March 2020. As this has progressed and staff have become ill, that has resulted in the NHS having significant shortages at all grades of staff. And it has meant that staff have been placed under pressure to work additional shifts. And this in itself has created a situation where staff burnout is a real possibility. During this period, the POA made a successful bid for additional funding from TikTok. Now I'm too old to watch TikTok, but I'm sure some of you will watch TikTok regularly and contribute to it. And I'm sure your children can and do. They gave us significant amounts of money to support NHS workers and any health workers, whether in the public or private sector, who had contracted COVID and needed financial support. This covers all our staff who work in special hospitals. It also covers all healthcare staff who work in prisons or any other secure establishment, whether that's a regional secure unit or a private sector hospital which has secure facilities. During the last 14 months, the POA has benefited approximately 40 healthcare members. The prevalence of long COVID has had a significant impact on our members, many of whom have struggled to get back to health and fitness and ultimately back to full-time work. I would like to commend the local committees who have supported members A, to access the money, and secondly, to ensure that hospital trusts continue to pay members when they've gone on to half pay, that they continue to be paid full pay, but also where their pay is made up of bank shifts, they have put pressure on NHS Trust to continue to pay those bank shifts even when they've not been worked. I would particularly like to thank the Ashworth branch, and I know we do have a rep from Ashworth today, where there has been the greatest level of need. We are determined that that money will be spent by August 2022, because if that money isn't spent, we will have to hand it back. And both myself and the NEC are not looking to hand the money back, so encourage people to apply. During this period, POA has also supported numerous members and employees to access the correct PPE and to ensure that there are safe systems of work to minimise the risks of transmitting COVID-19 within those healthcare settings. They've raised their concerns both locally and nationally and they have ensured that the correct PPE is available. Throughout the lockdown, there have been regular meetings by Zoom initially and then by Teams to ensure that there is a re the required support. It would be fair to say that initially this was a challenge, and I am probably the least technologically able on that table, and even I've managed to do it. So congratulations to those who've taught me. I know all of you at local level have supported members through capability, disciplinaries and grievances through what has been a demanding time. And this has been a challenge to do this during COVID and the local committees within the special hospitals and other regional secure units have done that. 
And the next issue, which most of you will have seen something on this morning, is about compulsory vaccination for NHS workers. The POA, along with other trade unions, have been very clear that vaccination should be voluntary, that it should not be compulsory. And currently, 90 to 92% of all NHS workers are vaccinated. Consultation period has finished, and I understand that a leaked report has gone out at seven o'clock this morning, saying that the government is about to insist that all healthcare workers who have a frontline task will require to be compulsorily vaccinated. But this will not start till April. And I think the concern of this, which was raised by the trade unions, is that we're going into a period of the winter and we are expecting increased demand on the health service, both from COVID, but also from other health-related conditions, particularly flu and influenza. We are concerned that the government has continued to ignore the trade union movement on the compulsory nature of vaccinations. The reality is, in the care sector, large numbers of people will be leaving on the 11th of November because they have chosen not to be vaccinated. The same may well happen within the health service. Currently, there is approximately a vacancy level of 84,000. This is likely to increase, and there are regional variations. It is clear to me that employers are somewhat divided over this, and there are concerns that in London and the South East, that there have been real difficulties filling vacancies because of Brexit and the pandemic restricting travel to Eastern European colleagues and colleagues who work from Europe. So they have not returned here. That has created significant vacancy levels in those regions. So there is a concern that compulsory vaccination will add to that difficulty. I want to give you a very recent update. Currently, the POA is one of 14 health unions who work together under Agenda for Change to negotiate terms and conditions. We currently have observer status. And as you will all be aware, the NHS was offered 1%. This was increased to 3% and was imposed quickly with no negotiations following the recommendations of the pay review body. The special hospitals in England were balloted and failed to meet the statutory threshold, as did every other trade union, where turnout has been around 20 to 30 percent, with much some lower than that. Some health unions are continuing to ballot on what has been an imposed pay deal, but most have accepted that ship has sailed. Planning commenced yesterday regarding what we are going to do about the 2022 negotiations where there was a reflection on what had occurred during previous pay negotiations. During the POA's indicative ballot, we asked the question whether there should be a single pay offer agreed by all 14 trade unions, to which the answer was yes, and whether members should be balloted for industrial action if an offer is put forward of less than 5%. And I'm pleased to say that the answer was also yes, which has given me a mandate from members to pursue a single pay offer yesterday, and we are going to continue this afternoon with those discussions. <coughs> there was a presentation given in terms of pay rises, and apart from NHS staff, the only public sector staff to receive a pay rise were teachers in Wales, who received 1.75% on the basis that they had to match graduate entry with other professions. Both the MOJ and the HMRC received pay rises of 2.79% and 5% respectively. But both of those involve changes in terms and conditions, particularly around holiday. And in the HMRC in particular, there will be a two-tier holiday pay arrangement. I'm going to give you very quickly comparisons to the private sector for August, September and October, which is the last quarter. Most pay awards were 2 to 3%. 
with just under 50% of companies awarding that to the private sector. 20% of companies gave 3 to 4% in the last quarter. And the median for that last quarter was 2.79%. This is up from the previous quarter of 1.6%. So what I will say to both my health colleagues here and prison staff is the discussions from government about the private sector needing to catch up. The private sector have caught up well and truly. And we will be negotiating on that basis. I can give you the highest pay rises in the private sector. And perhaps it won't surprise you. Costa Coffee this week has given a 5% pay rise to their staff. Dixon's Carphone Warehouse have given 9%. Itsu, 11%. And Prezzo Managers, 6.4%. So I would say in the public sector, it needs to be reflected. And I think it's a very clear message that certainly in health, and I know my colleagues from the POA will give in relation to prison staff as well. Finally, and I'm just going to very quickly say this, the POA has facilitated a presentation on pensions with the health unions, and some of them have agreed or are in the process of agreeing to join the POA, GMB, FBU and PCS, in challenging on the judicial review. And I think that's really good news because we need collectively to stand together. And my final comment is going to be that issues of bullying and harassment in the health service are in many ways no different to in the prison service. And that has been a long-standing issue. And unfortunately, during the pandemic, little work has been done on this. But as we go into recovery, we will be going back to that issue because people and staff and our members need a safe place to work. And it's really, really important that they're not worried that they're going to be bullied as they walk through the door. And I would hope that all of us would support that. Thank you very much for listening to me. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to go to join my <coughs> NHS colleagues. And hopefully, I will see you all in person um, in 2022. Thank you very much.